So Henry de Bromhead, we've come to nearly the end of the national hunt season. We're heading into Punchestown. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, you had a good summer and a good autumn, but the winter, the momentum started to build after Christmas. That is with good horses in your yard, with good staff and a good team. But you made the stars align. How has it been? How has it felt? How do you think it has all culminated in 2020, 2021? Actually, look, it's pretty surreal, uh, to be honest. The last month certainly has been. But um, as you say, like, I, I, I'm only... You know, like the, I'm such a small part of it all, to be honest. There's a massive team that we work with uh, at home that work with us. All the support we get from everyone, you know, from all our owners. You know, it's trying to get these good horses um, and they have the faith in us to, um, to, to, to send them to us, basically. Um, and uh, I remember you at Christmas. <laughs> Savile's Chase, two ma major chances and Minila Endo goes at the fence past the stands and so does your heart and soul, falls. And then within a mile, Aplutar comes, go comes good. And that was like, that was your season. It, it just, things started to click. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was watching the race with Jim Gorman. I'd say he'd never heard such language <laughs> out of anyone when Indo fell. And, um, and then suddenly, you know, you're focusing on uh, 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 Aplutard and uh, I mean, Dara was brilliant on him to get him over the line. Obviously, there was a doubt about him staying that day, but he stayed so well. And now when you see him in the Gold Cup, he, he, he does it so well. Yeah, look, it's just, it's been, as I say, a, a, an unbelievable season. And um, I, I, <laughs> that's, I keep think? using these words, I but I mean, that, that's it. You know, if you won a champion hurdle in a season, you'd be using unbelievable, incredible. But we just, you know, all the races we've won, it's just kind of hard to believe, really. Yeah, you've had, you've had a number of these horses. I was at Tremor to see your stars align in parade, and I felt like I was going back in time to see Cottage Rake, Hatton's Grace, and Castle Dermot, Vincent O'Brien stars, parading. And I, I, I knew in that moment that I would never see that again. And you must walk out into the yard. You're, you're seeing these horses that you would dream about having one of them and maybe having another to follow along, and you have them all at the same time. Like, what can you put that down to? It can't all be luck. No, it's definitely not luck. It's, as I've said, it's, it's the team working with us. It's the support we get from our owners. You know, they're like, they, they have the confidence and the faith in, in us to send, give us the opportunity to buy these gorgeous horses. And, um, and then it's it's just a team effort pulling it all together, um, and and then things coming right for us. Any second now, like I keep saying it, the horse in front of him, it fell and went left, and you know came in front of any second now could just as easily have fallen and gone right. Now, is that Rachel? Is it luck? Like the fence before Rachel switched, you know, to 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 have to be more in the middle than down the rail, so. You know, is she seeing around corners? <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's it's just a team effort and and things falling right for us. Yeah, and that super mare, Honeysuckle. Now, there, you have two super mares. Poor old Put the Kettle on gets overshadowed a fraction. And I remember meeting the Dermody family last year pre Cheltenham, and they said they had the option of the Arkel or the the, handi or the handicap novice. The novice handicap, yeah. And um, I said, oh, I suppose you'll go for the hand handicap. And she said, no, no, Arkel. Fair enough, she went and won the Arkel. And this year, everybody was like, Mayor's Chase? Mm. No, no, Champion Chase. The mm. first mayor to win the Champion Chase. Yeah. That's got completely overshadowed. Yeah, incredible again. Um, yeah, and fair play to the Darmides, you know, to Mary and, and the lads uh, involved in the syndicate. You know, uh, both times, and I was probably pushing them towards the novice handicap last year. And uh, they're kind of, no, no, let's go. You know, you said she, she, could, win, she could win the Arkel after, you know, I probably bleed. <laughs> I said it after she He's won a in He's trainer, November. he has to believe. Yeah, yeah, you know, then as you get closer, you start to think, well, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe, you know, she was off 140 something. Maybe that makes more sense. But fair play to them. They, you know, they'd back you all. They just go, look, we're happy to take the punt if, if you are. And, and that was it. And again, this year with the champion chase, I started, I hadn't even crossed my mind till David Jennings said it to me in. January, he said, God, she looks ideal for, I, I presume you'll run her in the mayor's chase. And I was going, God, that's quite a good idea. Maybe we should enter her for that. Um, then when I heard the stats and it's what 
made me run, run Sizing Europe in the Champion Chase uh, many, 10 years ago. Um, those Arkle stats are just crazy, you know, and so we had to give it a go. Um, and again, they back me uh, on whatever we decide between us and uh, it was incredible. Yeah. Can't beat ambition. Yeah, absolutely. If you're not in, you definitely won't win it. This is it. And I remember a couple of years ago, my heart went out to you when having purchased and trained Sizing John all the way along, you didn't get to enjoy his finest hour. So I, that's another forgotten story. You had won two in the Gold Cup this year and I just thought that made it very, very sweet. And look, watching the race, Manila Indo and Aplutar, Rachel and Jack, it, it looked fairly seamless. It looked like you'd never a moment's worry. Only the question of which horse would win. When they cross the line, I know words often don't do it justice, but what, what was going through your head? Did you speak to your dad? Did you speak to Heather? Were they at home or were they? Um, dad was at home, yeah, and Heather. Uh, I, I actually rang the Maloney's um, straight after the race. As usual, I couldn't get hold of Barry, so uh, I rang Mike. <laughs> Barry, answer your phone. <laughs> and uh, anyhow, I got to chat to them. It was such a big moment for them. They'd been going to Cheltenham for so many years, again, with their family, with their uncle, Noel, and their father, who sadly passed away a couple of years ago and, and missed seeing Indo win their first race there. Um, so it meant a huge amount to them, obviously, as well. And look, I, it was kind of disbelief at that stage. You know, the week we'd had, you know, um, uh, Rachel and Jack, I mean, you couldn't have asked them to have ridden the horses better than they did. That was exactly in my head what I'd have loved to have seen unfold and, or have seen them do that. And then obviously as it unfolded, of course, I was watching album photo jump in the last going, my two have Pesimist. gone too soon. Pesimist is coming out in you. They've gone too soon. He's going to come and catch us. And then halfway up the hill, it's like, ah, you know, where do you look? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. Like, and, and that disbelief rolled on into Aintree. Just from my own experience, how have your kids taken in Aintree? Because I know myself, I immediately went out and played football. I just didn't understand or appreciate yeah. how, and it did, it was a game changer for 12 months. My parents weren't at home. My grandparents raised me. That is not the case now because obviously people can't go anywhere, but for you and, and the kids at home, have they grasped how massive this win is for Manila, Manila Times? Yeah, look, I, th I think so. I mean, um, they're, they're definitely getting, you know, they're coming to an age where they're understanding it and, and um, getting more and more interested in it. Um, and yeah, I'd like, they know how it's, it's incredible what's happened. And um, uh, I just hope they don't think it'll happen every year. And I'm sort of some disappointment. Your expectations. To them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So as we roll on into the Punchestown Festival, hopefully we'll see some of your stars, Bob Ollinger and co. What can we expect or how is the team shaping up? They see, seem really well. Um, so we're hoping Honey will run in the champion hurdle, Indo in the Gold Cup. Aplutard is better left than right, so we've, we've finished him uh, for the season. Um, Bob, uh, we're aiming towards the two and a half mile novice hurdle. Colixios will go for the four-year-olds. Tell me something will go for the mares or one of the novices. Um, uh, there's so many. Aspartar will go for the, for the champion hurdle. Um, Jason the militant might go for that as well. Um, there's, uh, I'm trying Put to think. Put the kettle on. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's shocking. Um, put the kettle on. Might go to Sandown. We'll see. Um, yeah, for the she loves. She just seems to love travelling. I have to say, just before Cheltenham, I kind of thought we might have lost her for a little bit. She went very quiet on us and everything. And as soon as she landed or in Cheltenham, she was just bouncing back to her old self and um, she seems to love that so I think we might head for Sandown we'll see no decisions being made yet for the celebration chase well just listening to all those names it's like a song absolute <laughs> yeah. king of beauty and so, uh, all we can say is congratulations thank you so and, much and hopefully yeah. it's it's not the end well hopefully yeah. Punch of sound is coming on it in one month and that's it you know thank you Henry thank you